Hey gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, coming to you from rainy Manhattan, the very site of the crime of that lunatic verdict against Trump at the end of, back at the end of May, May 31st. Remember, uh, Trump was actually supposed to get sentenced a few days back on July the 11th, ironically the day of Biden's train wreck press conference. Uh, but the corrupt judge in that trial postponed the sentencing to late September. If needed, he noted, this of course was all in light of the Supreme Court's landmark decisions, siding with Trump on presidential immunity. And now there's word that Trump's lawyers have filed a motion to have the whole thing thrown out in light of the Supreme Court's landmark decision. We'll see where things go with that. But what I wanted to talk to you about today from rainy New York is that we're getting more and more data that's showing that New York is indeed in play for November. I mean, this is pretty astonishing stuff. The local Fox affiliate here, Fox 5 New York, just had a piece on this today. They're openly asking the question, is New York a swing state in 2024? And the basic argument here is that the latest polling has found that only about 40% of New Yorkers approve of Biden's job performance. Remember, nationally, no president has ever been successfully reelected with job approval in the low 40s. But of course, that's that's the national average. So Biden may still be able to squeak by with 40 percent approval in New York. But at the same time, we're getting polling now that shows that Trump is within striking distance of the margin of error. He's only behind by single digits. In a state where Democrats, remember, outnumber Republicans by two to one, and where Biden won by nearly 25% of the vote back in 2020. And by the way, this polling that shows that Trump is within striking distance, that was before the disaster of the debate. There's some internal polling that shows that Democrats, internal polling for Democrats, that shows that Trump may even be ahead in New York. Now, I know we don't want to get too giddy or complacent here, but we're seeing in New York what seems to be happening all over the nation. What we're seeing appears to be the very same dynamics that propelled Trump to victory in 2016, re-emerging right now in 2024. Or 2020, if you're Biden, right, who promised his dwindling supporters, oh, beat Trump again in 2020. But now we're getting polling data. That's showing that the working class is supporting Trump overwhelmingly in 2024. Again, seriously, this is stunning stuff. The latest New York Times poll has Trump over Biden by nearly 25 points among working class voters, both white and non-white, by the way. Again, we have to underscore this. The working class up until 2016 was the backbone, the central pillar of the Democrat Party from FDR's New Deal onwards. The single most loyal constituents of the Democrats outside of black women were the working class voter. They're now fully aligned with Trump by double digits. It's an astonishing political realignment. And whereas in 2016 and 2020, it was primarily the white working class realigned around Trump. Now in 2024, it's the non-white working class that's moving over to Trump. Rich Barris, of the People's Pundit, whom many I certainly do believe is the single best pollster out there. He saw this months ago. And by the way, Rich just came out with a poll the other day, the big data poll that shows that Trump is running away with this. He's got a six point lead nationally and he leads in all of the swing states. And again, remember, Republicans haven't even had their convention yet. I mean, in order to really grasp the significance of what's happening here, the context here, all of this is happening at the very same time that Republicans normally suffer a significant lag in the polls. Summertime happens to be a time when we see a pro-Democrat response bias emerge. And this is because one of the key differences between Republicans and Democrats is that Republicans tend to be far more pro-natal <laughs> than Democrats, right? Democrats, but you know, most specifically liberals, they've largely stopped having kids. We're even seeing marriage rates decline significantly among liberal leftists. So polling in the summertime tends to inordinately and artificially benefit the left because at the same time, 
conservatives are having more kids than ever. And so during the summer, what are they doing, <laughs> right? What are they doing? They're out there enjoying their families. They're on vacation. Like all pollsters know this. This is uh, widely known. Republicans are disproportionately more prone to be on vacation or just not even being, uh, not even paying attention to things in the political realm during the summer. So they're not interested in taking a poll. And so this seems to be the main reason why Republican candidates tend to lag in the polling during the summer, and then they generally surge in the fall after their convention, whereas Democrats tend to poll best in the summer. So with that context, what we're seeing here with the summer polling for Trump is just, it's astonishing. So astonishing that even the local Fox affiliates here in Manhattan are openly discussing today whether New York has indeed become a swing state. Whether the growing strength of Trump and the imploding, declining weakness of Biden is actually making one of the single most deep blue states in the entire nation a freaking swing state. Bill Maher, by the way, is the latest to come out and say that Biden's toast, he thinks his days are numbered. Politico is reporting, I think it just came out yesterday, that uh, Democrats are now admitting they've lost the House. There was a very real, viable path to winning the House in November for Democrats. They thought, at least, many, many pollsters thought that. There was such a significant, noticeable gap between Trump's support and the lack of support for Republicans down ticket. And we largely have people like Paul Ryan and Kevin McCarthy and you know, Mike Johnson to blame for that. Then the debate happened, or as Politico put it, then Biden melted down. And ever since that meltdown, the Democrats have seen their hopes for taking over the House absolutely dashed. Again, this according to the mouthpiece of the DNC. So amazing stuff is happening here. Now, obviously, I know I keep saying this over and over again. This is no time to get complacent. This is no time to sit back and just assume that November is going to be too big to rig on its own. We've all got to get busy now, just 100 plus days away from November. We have all got to make sure that we know what our own individual part is to play in all of this and then go out and do it. So remember, gang, that's why I'm hosting our special call to arms event on Wednesday, July 17th, that you're absolutely not going to want to miss. It's a completely, totally free event that's designed to show you the crucial role you can play in securing Trump's victory in November. We've already had over a thousand of you RSVP, your fellow patriots. And if you click on that link below right now to secure your spot, we're going to send you your very own Courageous Conservative book bundle absolutely free. As a thank you for taking your part in securing Trump's victory seriously. So don't wait. Click on that link below to register today. You're going to love it. And I love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. God bless.